Stop! Don't buy that bad FM transmitter. This video will show you how to choose the right transmitter for your radio station. I will also show you how to tell which transmitters are good value for money, which ones sound better and which ones give the best signal range. And more importantly, if you will cause interference with other signals. So when you decide on a transmitter, it should not be just because it looks cool or is cheaper or has some high power level claim. Having the strongest transmitter is not as important as you think and might actually be something you don't want. I will explain this more as we go, so keep watching. Firstly, there are two types of transmitters. They are FCC compliant and non-FCC compliant transmitters. If you have a license to broadcast, you must have an FCC compliant transmitter. In many countries, the transmitter does not have to be FCC approved, but it must at least meet the minimum specifications, which are normally at least as strict as the FCC regulations, or you can lose your license. If you don't have a license and you are running a hobby radio station, Arr! then you are better off using an FCC Ahoy! compliant transmitter anyway, because non-FCC compliant transmitters can be very very bad as far as causing interference and going out of the specifications allowed by the laws of your country. Even if you are below the signal strength allowed in your country and you interfere with some other people's signal, you can run into some serious Abundance shit. I'm talking legal and civil cases. Coming up, how to know if the sound quality will be good even before hearing the transmitter. But if you just want to have fun and not really make a radio station, then the best and most fun can be to just buy a little cheap FM transmitter kit. These normally only put out about 30 milliwatts or so, which may seem like a tiny amount, but you'll be shocked at how far the signal will go. I will do a video in future to show the build of one of these little transmitters. Also, keep in mind that because of the laws in your country, you might not actually be allowed to even use these low power transmitters. So be sure to check that first. But in many countries, little transmitters like this can be used from about 25 milliwatts up to 100 milliwatts. I will put links in the description for transmitters that are good for licensed stations and even non-licensed stations and even ones that, well, let's just say, use at your own risk. <laughs> Seriously, don't buy this sh But hey, if you have a thing for cheap junk and have a bit of a death wish, who am I to stand in your way? If you are not just wanting to play with FM signals and want to choose a ready-built transmitter for your radio station, there are four factors to keep in mind. They are how far do you want to transmit, the reliability of the transmitter, what quality of sound do you care about, and the cost of the transmitter. Let's start with the sound quality. That's what a lot of people care about, and rightly so. Most FCC approved transmitters will provide audio response details in their specifications. They mostly don't provide a response curve like you would find with audio equipment because the specifications firstly are from 30 Hz to 15 kHz with transmitters as opposed to 20 Hz to 20 kHz with audio equipment, which is the frequency response range of the human ear and therefore all audio equipment. Transmitters do use things like pre-emphasis to overcome the sort of thing as well as noise reduction, but that's a discussion for another video. The variations across the graph are so low that if you place these details onto the graph, it would be pretty much a flat graph anyway. That is, of course, if the specifications are accurate. If you have not seen one of these before, it just shows how the audio equipment, like speakers, respond to the input audio frequencies. What you want is a very flat curve. If there are big spikes or bumps, it means that the sound equalization is not good. The idea is not to enhance or defeat any frequencies. You might be thinking, what? No man, I want a transmitter with some fat bass and some sweet treble. Uh, well, no. That would be a bad transmitter. The equalization where you boost the bass and treble and so on is something you should be able to choose with the use of a graphic equalizer or multiband processor. So you want the curve as flat as possible or the variations in dBs across all the frequencies to be as low as possible. Then we get into some technical shit. There are terms like total harmonic distortion. This indicates how badly the sound will be distorted by the transmitter. All of that coming up in part 2. If it's not yet ready, be sure to subscribe to be notified of when it is ready to watch. See you then.